This event is being sponsored to the generosity of Ek Khan Group, Islamic Bank Bangladesh, Brahim of Rule, Standard Chartered Bank, Exim Bank, and Islamic Bank's Consultative Forum. So, thanks to all of them for making this even happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to listen to our honored guest here, His Excellency Dr. Hassan Mahmoud, Honorable Minister for Environment and Forest Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. May I request Dr. Hassan Mahmoud to be present in his speech? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Chair of the session, Ambassador Mohammed Mohsin, Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, former Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, Chairman of WIEF Foundation, Mr. Tun Musa Hitam, and Salahuddin Kashim Khan, Chairman of WIEF Bangladesh Chapter. Ambassador of High Commission of Malaysia to Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, good, morning, good, afternoon, good evening to you all. First of all, I want to register my thanks to WIEF and Seattle Foundation to invite me here. Indeed, these two organizations have been playing a key role to unite, communicate, cooperate among the business leaders around the Muslim world. This is the fact that the cooperation coordination among the business leaders in the Muslim world is not enough. This could have been much better to a different height by this time because now the world has become a global village. When the world is a global village, then the cooperation, coordination, integration, and better understanding among the business leaders in the Muslim world is required for the betterment of the people in the Muslim world. Today in the planet, in the world, the private sector has been playing a very vital role for the economic growth of each country. Now, in the world, in the modern world, government is the facilitator and government is working with the private sector. So better coordination and cooperation in the private sector is essential for the betterment of the country, for the betterment of the people. So for the betterment of the people in the Muslim world. And Bangladesh is really committed to keep cooperation, to have more cooperation. Bangladesh government and the leader of Bangladesh, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, is really committed to have better cooperation, to give assistance to these two forums. And she has shown her willingness by joining in the sixth meeting of uh, WIEF and Seattle Foundation in 2010 in Malaysia. And I had the opportunity also to join in the meeting organized by uh, Malaysian Chamber of Commerce in Bangladesh with the assistance from Seattle Foundation and WIEF in Malaysia uh, back in 2010. And I had the opportunity to have lunch with the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, Dr. Mohamed Mohamed the legend of the world today. I'm thankful, I want to register my thanks to the former Prime, Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia to depict the difference what he has observed over the last 30 years in Bangladesh between today and 30 years back. He has, he has seen the difference in the dressing of the people the difference in the faces of the people, the difference in the history of Dhaka, and this is the reality. Bangladesh 
despite having many difficulties, despite having greater natural calamities, despite having to some extent political instability, despite having many other problems, but is still the people of Bangladesh with their with their ability, with their willingness, they are getting they have made tremendous progress over the last ten years. Over the last three years, as I am the minister of this government, what we have achieved over the last three years, Bangladesh was a food deficit country and today, today at this point, Bangladesh is at the doorstep of a daily food self-sufficiency in food grain production. This year we have imported just six lakh tons of food grain. Next year we might not be. Despite economic meltdown in the planet, despite economic problem in the world, in North America and in Europe, Bangladesh could achieve 6.7% GDP growth rate in the last financial year. And in this year, the projected GDP growth rate is 7%. And over the last three years, the purchasing power capacity of the people of this country has been increased by 75 to 80%. In the last week, the chief economist of the World Bank has said, despite economic meltdown in the planet, Bangladesh has made tremendous progress and that is an example for the third world countries. But it's still, Malaysia is a showcase. Malaysia is an example for Bangladesh. How we can transform our country from a developing to a developed country. But the deputy, former deputy prime minister of Malaysia has said, present GDP growth rate in Malaysia is five, and in Bangladesh is almost seven today. So if we have political stability, if we can employ all of our effort and willingness, if we can unite and if we have better coordination among the business community between GEO and government organizations, government and private sector, if we have better coordination, because this is a global village, Bangladesh is not a not an island in this planet, is a global village. Bangladesh is a country of this global village. So for the betterment of this country, for the betterment of the people of this country, for the betterment of the people of the Muslim world, we need better coordination and cooperation. I am very pleased that in this fifth round term, climate change has been included because we are the old subjective of the episode climate change. We are the innocent victim of the episode climate change. The per capita per year greenhouse gas emission done by the people of Bangladesh 0.3 ton. And per capita per year average greenhouse gas emission done by the developing world 2 ton. And per capita per year greenhouse gas emission done by the people of the developed world 15 to 20 ton. So we are well below than the developed countries, even well below than the average emission done by the people in the developing countries. But we are the old subjective. All the negative impacts of the climate change are visible in Bangladesh. Sea level rise is not threat in Bangladesh, it is the reality in Bangladesh. That what is about to come. It has come in Bangladesh. Salinity intrusion is not threat, it is the reality in Bangladesh. And glacier melting in the Himalayan region, and because of the glacier melting, threat on the people of Bangladesh, on the ecosystem of Bangladesh, is the reality. And because of the climate change, change in the world climate order, and because of the change in the world climate order, more frequent natural calamities, more cycle, more strong, is the reality in the case of Bangladesh. We are affected by all the negative factors of the climate change. Indeed, we all are affected. Maybe Bangladesh is the worst victim, is the first victim, but we all are victim of the episode of climate change. Since we're the passenger of the same lifeboat, this planet Earth, 
we must bear in mind that this planet Earth is the only life boat for human in the big universe. In this big universe, no other planet has been invented so far, or no other planet has been found so far where people can go or where people exist, human exist. So this is the only life boat. And when this life boat is endangered, all the passengers of this life boat, people of Malaysia, people of Turkey, people of Ethiopia, people of Europe and North America, all are endangered. So to salvage this ailing planet, to salvage this planet for the existence, very existence of the humanity in this planet, it is essential to have better cooperation and understanding. I am very pleased that you have included climate change. And I hope tomorrow in the discussion some valuable suggestion will come out through the discussion what could be done by the business community, what could be done by the WIEF and Seattle Foundation to address the issue related to climate change and to have the people in Bangladesh in the Muslim world. And another topic has been included, microfinance. Microfinance in Bangladesh has contributed a lot. As microfinance is successful and has contributed a lot in this country, we know the demerits of microfinance also. So taking into account the success stories and the demerits of the microfinance, if you could invent in the framework of the Muslim rules and regulation to provide some fairness in the form of microfinance, that will bring a lot of benefit in the poor communities, in the, among the poor people across the Muslim world. I would, I would expect that solution will come out from the discussion tomorrow. And private higher education, 20 years back, private higher education was not the reality in this country. But today is the reality. And that sector, private higher education, is, is providing a lot of benefit to the people in this country. I used to teach in an university that is a private university. So, but we have to keep in mind that private higher education should not be limited for the people of the rich community and rich society. So, private higher education should be available to the poor community as well. So, I believe from the discussion tomorrow, that suggestion would, will come out. I will not elaborate because you have been waiting for lunch, dinner and uh, also the cultural show. And since you have been waiting for dinner and cultural show, that is more attractive. The species are not attractive. So, I am eagerly waiting for the suggestions that will come out from the discussions tomorrow and after tomorrow. And by saying this, I declare here open the round table, fifth round table, organized by WIEF and Seattle Foundation here in Dhaka. Thanks to you. Thank you very much, the Honorable Minister, for your very thought-provoking speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I seem to have missed out in mentioning Green Delta.